This is not a necromancy game, but it is nevertheless a game I enjoy quite a lot, with some interesting minion gameplay. I've owned it for a long time, since before I even started this YouTube channel, and it was always in my mind to cover it. As the game is set in some kind of post-apocalyptic or sci-fi world, it's perhaps comparable to a setting like Fallout, but then again not really. The civilizations and people present in this game seem very unlike anything in our world. Something I really like about this game is the atmosphere it creates. The setting is very intriguing, and I feel like I'm exploring a very unfamiliar world, full of exceptionally dangerous creatures. Combine this with the music, which is kind of creepy but in a good way, and the art style, you have a game that really provokes the imagination. I've praised ASCII art roguelikes in the past because of how the symbols and characters leave everything up to your imagination, similar to when you read a book. The way the art is done in Caves of Kud leaves enough to the imagination to feel a bit like reading a book without actually just being symbols. It seems like a perfect balance between the two styles, and I really like this. There's a few ways to get minions. The best way, in my opinion, is to be a mutant. Just for a little background, there's two kinds of human you can play in this game. The mutants and the true kin. Mutants have access to all kinds of physical and mental mutations, which give them strange and wonderful properties and abilities. Physical mutations are stuff like having two heads, or wings, or claws to dig through tiles with, while mental mutations feel more like you're using magic. True kin, on the other hand, have no mutations, but they start out with much better attributes and can also augment themselves with cybernetics and implants later on, which mutants can't do. As a Trukin, you start out much less powerful, and I've only been able to survive as a mutant so far. The most useful mutation is burgeoning. It's a mental mutation that allows you to summon a whole heap of plants. The quality of the plants depends on your ego, and the level of the mutation itself, which you can upgrade with mutation points. The plants that are spawned are random, and are a mix of offensive, defensive, and crafting plants. It's most useful in combat, but you can also use its ability to make money by harvesting your own plants. Like everything in Caves of Kud, your plants can be extremely dangerous to both you and your enemies. The most dangerous plant that spawns is the Feral La, which produces slow-moving pods that move toward the enemy and explode. These pods do a lot of damage and will kill most things, especially weak things, as well as destroy equipment and demolish trees. The pods will detonate if shot, and will also detonate each other. So one pod blowing up can lead to a chain reaction of mass destruction. It'll also kill the other plants around it with these pods, and even itself. The most dangerous thing about this plant is that it can sometimes, under circumstances I don't quite know, become hostile to you. I suspect if you accidentally hit it with a weapon, like a stray arrow or bullet, it can go hostile. So you end up with a plant that's constantly sending bombs your way until you destroy it. Other dangerous plants are the Aloe Pyra, which is kind of like a firebomb, which is triggered when stepped on, and the Aloe Volta, which zaps things when stepped on. The Aloe Pyra is extremely volatile, and I give it a very wide berth whenever it appears. Less dangerous are the Seed Spitters, which behave like useful turrets, and things like Jilted Lovers, which latch onto creatures and stop them from moving. The Kudzu will also spawn, Usually this plant is a menace because it will rust items when it hits you, which makes them useless. I've lost a lot of equipment to a surprise attack from a kudzu, but with your kudzus they'll do that to the enemy instead, which isn't all that useful because it just ruins the loot, but perhaps it could save you in a really strange situation by disarming the enemy. Other useful offensive plants are the thirst thistle, which behave like seed spitters but do more damage and dehydrate the enemy and also very bizarre plants like this one, which will teleport a creature that steps onto it, to another of its kind. The safest plants are things like grasses, trees, and mushrooms, which are either useless or useful for harvesting. Even these can be used in combat though, because a wall of otherwise useless plants can stop someone shooting at you by disrupting their line of sight. A very useful offensive plant, and also a very safe one, is the livid creeper. It is mobile and it likes to walk on walls, so it will follow you wherever you go. Over time you'll accumulate lots of these because they hang around forever until killed and keep following you. So you have a constant bodyguard of creepers that will latch onto and hold enemies as well as damage them. These creepers have saved my life so many times and also seem to never be a threat to you. So these livid creepers are definitely one of the best things you can get out of burgeoning. There's also another weird thing that can happen, clones. A certain type of plant can clone you. 
So if you step on it, you end up with clones of yourself, with your abilities and equipment running amok. This is both incredibly awesome and incredibly dangerous. If you're not careful, friendly fire from your clones will end you. In any case, if you're careful with this spell, it is fantastic because you can throw down a wall of terrifying alien plants whenever you need to and watch them destroy your enemies, or teleport them around. The next best mental mutation for minions is Beguile Creature. It lets you walk up to any non-humanoid and turn it into a permanent minion, with an HP boost. It will follow you, carry your stuff, and even let you damage it without ever going hostile. The only catch is that sometimes it can fail, and if it fails, the creature becomes hostile. I haven't looked up the mechanics, but it's probably the case that creatures at a very high level relative to you, or that hate you very much, are much harder to beguile. If you use beguile successfully on a creature while having a beguiled creature already, the old one becomes hostile. This ability is fantastic, especially early on, because it gives you a much needed meat shield. If you can keep these creatures alive, they'll also level up over time and become stronger. Proselytize is a useful skill which is not a mutation, but can be learned by anyone with enough ego, and it lets you convince an intelligent humanoid to help you out. If successful, you'll receive a permanent follower that makes use of its equipment. I like to recruit gunners and archers where I can, because a ranged ally is quite helpful. It seems like it's easier to recruit from factions that are either neutral or friendly towards you, rather than hostile. I made myself a gigantic enemy of Snapjaws by killing their leaders, and now it's impossible for me to recruit them. You can also get into a faction's good graces by doing stuff for them, and then you can convince members of that faction to join you. I haven't tried this, but I assume it's similar to proselytize. So even with a non-minion build, you could theoretically get a minion this way, if you wanted to. Trukin are not able to beguile creatures like a mutant can, but all Trukin have the ability to rebuke robots. A rebuked robot will follow you around as a companion. You can only have one robot at a time. The final way you can get a type of minion is by being a tinker. Both mutants and Trukin can become tinkers, and tinkers can build turrets. Any ranged weapon can be made into a turret, even bows. I like to have a few crappy short bows and cheap guns like muskets on me, so I can turn these into turrets. A short bow turret filled with cheap arrows can be pretty devastating, especially early on. Later on you can put explosive arrows into the turret, and then the short bow turret becomes very destructive. As for musket turrets, even the crappiest guns pack quite a punch, so they're pretty good. Cheap rifles can also make great turrets. When you're low level, it can be hard to afford to make turrets, as ammunition and weapons can be too hard to come by. But my level 25 character has 2000 lead slugs and hundreds of arrows, so making a musket turret and giving it 200 rounds is no problem. The biggest problem with turrets is that once placed, you can't pick them up again, or move them, so the weapon is sacrificed forever and can't be salvaged. You can take the ammo out of it though. If you destroy the turret, it sometimes gives you some scrap. Turrets are glass cannons. Their damage output is great, but they're toast if the enemy gets to them in melee range or manages to shoot them. One of my favorite things to do with turrets with a new Tinker character is to find a field full of his neutral horses, which are very tough and also yield high XP. Then I set up two or three arrow turrets and then shoot one of these horses. The entire herd gets aggroed, but the turrets will cut them down and you get heaps of XP. So there you have it. Minion gameplay in Caves of Kud. I think a mutant is the best option for minion gameplay due to the plant summoning. Although if you want to have robot minions, Trukin is a good option as well. I just find a field of vicious plants and a horde of clones pretty tough to sacrifice for one single robot. I'm scoring Caves of Kud an 8.75 out of 10. If you go for burgeoning as a mutant, you can have an unlimited amount of plants and also a gigantic horde of clones. On top of this, you can have turrets, a single humanoid follower, and a single animal follower. Or a robot follower, if you chose Trukin. Permanent minions is harder to score. Technically, you can have an endless army of creepers following you around, which are permanent. All of your plant minions are permanent, as are your turrets and your beguiled creatures and proselytized humanoids. But this is not the same as having 10 permanent skeletons or something following you around. Most of the time, your minions will be stationary, so I'm scoring it in the middle. Minion diversity is insanely high, given that any creature in the game can be beguiled, any humanoid can be proselytized, any robot rebuked, 
yourself cloned, any ranged weapon turreted, and also an extremely diverse amount of plant minions. I also find the game quite immersive, very immersive actually. Thanks for watching, I've got more videos on minions and necromancy stuff coming soon.